Good afternoon, Crossroads. It is Thursday, May the 7th, and we are just a few minutes late. We were having technical difficulties. Um, we were, were trying to stream our Lunch and Learn live streams to um, Band and YouTube and Facebook like we do on Sunday mornings, but I am not getting the settings right. We tried, didn't we? We did. Yeah. Well, we're going to give you a minute or two to jump on here. So uh, let us know. Once you jump on, let us know who's here. I uh, see one viewer right now. Give us a shout out if you're on. This is my least favorite part. I'm waiting for people yeah, to get on. Yeah, waiting for people to get on. Hey, Brian Rock. Howdy. Yeah, just the the shout outs. Kinda, and, yeah, just an awkward. Yeah, it's time. it's a little awkward, especially when you're going. Hey, let us know when you're on, and there's like only one person <laughs> on. And... Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some people jumping on now. Hi, peeps. Hello, peeps. Let us know who's on here, so we know who we're talking to. Lunch and learn live stream for Thursday, May the 7th. I thought you would make me lunch. I but should have made you I lunch. Know. Lunch and learn. Yeah. You didn't. Yeah, but you already told me you're going to Chick-fil-A to get lunch before you start working at night. Yeah. That's very true. Hello, Miss Gwen. Yeah, I'm the surprise. Yep. What did she say? I can't read it. This is is a now surprise. Yeah, now surprise. This is a nice surprise. Nice surprise. Yeah. Hi, Gwen. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to have to tell me what people are saying because I can't. You're blind. I know, I'm blind. Yeah, I noticed that when I was watching it, you always like put your Isn't that terrible? glasses on. Yeah, Tanya's here. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Yeah, so I like... I had to put my glasses on to read what's on the screen, but then all the glare on my glasses, I hate that. And so then I take them off and then I can't read what you're posting, but yeah, it's good to have all of you on here. So far, Brian and Gwen and Tanya and uh, let us, there's, looks like there's others on. Let us know who's on here. Who is lurking in the shadows? Yeah. Hey, Bonnie. Um, we had technical difficulties, so it is not playing on band. Uh, it's not playing on Facebook or YouTube. We tried um, to figure it out. You should have had a guest that actually knows how to I know. do technology stuff. Caleb McCain, you need to be my ne not Next Caleb guest. McCain. Caleb, <laughs> Caleb Henry. Henry. Um, I'm doing something wrong on setting up the stream to all three locations. So you need to be my next guest to help me figure it out. Anyway, it's good to uh, good to have you all on here. Uh, in case you don't know, I know there's probably uh, some of you that are watching or will watch this later that you don't know who's sitting next to me. Um, but this is my daughter, Brooke. Hi. Um, she is our favorite child of all of our children. He says um, that to all of us. I do. I say it to all of them individually, <laughs> hopefully out of earshot of the other two. But uh, we talk about it. We know. Yeah, they all know. Uh, but Brooke is our eldest child. She is the oldest by three minutes. She has a twin sister, uh, Brooke and Brittany, and uh, they are uh, inseparable in. Unless they're separated yeah. by 6,000 miles. 6, miles right now. Um, but yeah, so Brooke hi, and I... Rhonda. Rhonda says hi. Oh, hi, Miss Rhonda. Uh, Brooke and I do a weekly coffee date, and uh, we've been uh, doing Fridays. We, we do a Friday coffee date, and until, you know, Corona raised her ugly head in the Midwest... Um, we were doing a tour of Kansas City coffee shops. Mm -hmm. So we would meet in a different Kansas City coffee shop every Friday morning. And we'd have coffee together and we'd 
rate the coffee and evaluate it. And honestly, our best coffee dates have been right here in my office, <laughs> haven't they? <laughs> That's true. Not as many distractions. Yeah, we don't not have to as drive many. As far. It doesn't cost as much. We don't have to drive as far. Um, so I guess but we're. I do miss it. Yeah. Getting to see different parts of the city and. Yeah, some nice. coffee shops are very, very conducive for you know sitting and having a conversation and mm -hmm. meeting people. Other coffee shops are not. <laughs> um, so uh, so yeah, we've we've had fun doing that and get around the city and um, we tend to meet people that we know yeah. and nearly everyone that we go to, but or that you know. Uh, it's true. He knows true. everyone. Yeah, but uh, but we moved our coffee date this week to Thursday, and uh, so she was here, and I was like, "Why don't we just hang out and you do the live stream with me?" So, um, um, so that's what we're doing, and uh, today we are um, today we're going to talk about. So many of you may not know, uh, Brooke and Brittany both went to uh, Southwest Baptist University uh, in 2013. They, that was a long time ago. Shed my yeah, age. Seven everyone. years ago. Uh, they went to SBU and, uh, Brooke got, uh, her degree. What was your, what's your degree in? Psychology and sociology with an emphasis in counseling. Okay. And then, uh, she was going to build on that. And so she moved farther away. So that was in Bolivar, Missouri. She was about two and a half hours away. And then when she graduated in 2017, she moved where? To Lynchburg, Virginia. Yeah. She was just telling me today how much she misses the mountains. I do. She's glad to be home. She's glad to be home with her home peeps. But she's missing hiking in the mountains with, with friends. And yeah. So if you want to go hiking, hit me up. Yeah. Brooke's I'm trying, to, trying to get a group of people together to go hiking down in Arkansas uh, here in the very near future. So... Um, hit her up if you're interested. Um, but yeah, so uh, she went to Lynchburg. Uh, she went to Liberty University, was going to get her uh, her master's in clinical mental health counseling. Yep. Um, and then uh, she came to a discovery um, about a semester into that. And what was that discovery? That I don't want to counsel people. <laughs> <laughs> I she, like telling people what to do, not letting them figure it out. Yeah, she's she's great at counseling if you take her advice mm -hmm. and act on it now. But if you're one of those that you need like to reschedule, you know, multiple appointments, weekly appointments with a counselor, she talking is talking about the same thing. Yeah, yeah, she is not your gal. And she learned that early on. Yeah. So, um, but she had gotten a, a gotten a job in a uh, in a, a mental health hospital uh, there in Lynchburg uh, with her counseling degree, uh, psychology and sociology degree, and it was a good job. And she got to see the nursing side of things, right? Yeah. And that was kind of well, years ago, ten years ago, uh, ten eleven years ago, our, our son Brian was in Children's Mercy. Uh, for some, uh, he had a bone cyst in the top part of his femur and went th over the course of several years, went through several surgeries. Um, and that first time in Children's Mercy was kind of the bug kind of bit you, didn't it? Yeah. Um, yep. I just being around nurses and healthcare and I really liked it. And then mom with all of her treatments and all of that and just always has really caught my attention and really, um, what's the word? captured me yeah yes. yeah but she did start to drift toward the social work side of it and and still enjoys that piece of it yeah. uh and so um i want to do both now yeah so what are you doing um, what are you doing with that going to nursing school i have finished my prereqs and i start in january very cool i'm excited and it's a one year program right yep yeah. so in one year i get to as long as i pass nursing school and then yeah. past, I get to be a nurse. So how intense is that going to be? Oh, insane. Yeah. So what they told me. So cramming, basically cramming a four Every year single, yeah. nursing no, two, degree, two a two year. year nursing degree. Okay. Into one, yeah. into one year. Yeah. So all the clinicals and everything will all be done. Yeah. Yeah. That is going to be crazy. So, um, so yeah, so she's working hard. She's done with all of her prereqs now, and so she's gonna be working hard over the next 
six months um, to uh, kind of store some money away and um, and then quit your job in yeah. January, right? Yeah. And start school. So, uh, and then her next job will be in a hospital. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nursing somewhere. So, um, so we're awfully proud of her and uh, and what she's doing. But we were talking this morning just about um, just to, you know about this season uh, of life uh, that we're all we're all going through and and you know the navigating the ups and the downs and um, uh, and you know depression and frustration and navigating through all those things and. So I wanted to capitalize on Brooke's experience. Um, she's worked uh, in a mental health hospital. Um, then when she moved here, she's she's been working at Crittenton, um, which is a long-term uh, facility for mental health for youth, right? Mm-hmm. For adolescents. And uh, so she started there full-time, but that was just a little much with her trying to go to school. So uh, she's been working there one or two days a week and then also working full-time at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. And, um, and so with her experience as well as her degree, we thought we'd talk about um, this, this thing that we call, often termed in our culture, uh, is uh, self-care, right? Yeah. And so um, what does self-care look like for the believer, for the child of God, for a follower of Jesus? So um, you just want to take it away? Yeah. Talk about what that looks like? I think... Um, over the last year, I've been thinking a lot about it because we talk about it a lot. It's a big thing in this culture is self-care. And I think that comes from having the opposite, you know, um, we tend to go one way or another with Mm -hmm. a lot of things. And so we were like not doing self-care at all. And now it's like all people talk about, at least in my circles, in being in the, um, healthcare and mental health um, areas and going to school for psychology and counseling, we talk about it all the time. And so, um, for those of you who maybe don't know, self care is focusing on yourself and taking care of yourself so that you can focus on others and pour into others. And they say a lot of self care things are like, you know, reading, working out, um, doing something that makes you happy and that makes you feel better and rested and stuff like that um and the secular worldview yeah. of self-care basically says you can't take care of other people until you until you take, take care, care of yourself, of yourself. yes right. yep and um and for a lot of people who deal with anxiety and depression that's the what they do it's coping skills and self-care is a lot of what they talk to about but i'm afraid we've gone into this where it's almost too much Mm. we have focused in on like i need to focus on myself i need to self-care before i can do anything and it's almost like we've had too much of it and i've started to see like i don't know about you but i really do think that we were created with this ingrained thinking about ourselves Mm. taking care of ourselves you know we don't have to be convinced to care about ourselves or to think about ourselves. Yeah, scripture supports that. You know, when we talk about the the great commandment, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And Jesus said, and the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as what? Yourself. As yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't give us any kind of recipe for self-care in that. Mm -mm. Why? Because we're naturally, we're born with the natural uh, uh, subconscious or unconscious tendency to love ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, to take care of ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think that it's important for us as Christians to talk about that and to talk about what self-care as Christians look like. Um, because I do, I think it's going to be different for us because again, we, we do, we think about ourselves a lot, you know? So what about the person that says, oh, you got that wrong. I do need self care because I hate myself. I need, I need the, I need to intentionally focus on taking care of myself because 
I, 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 I naturally hate myself. Yeah. I would say to them, you're still, even though it's negative, you're still thinking about yourself. Mm. You're still ingrained with that constantly looking out for yourself, constantly thinking about yourself. It's just, you've turned it into a negative thing, which is even worse and more unhealthy, but it doesn't change the fact that you're still thinking about yourself and constantly in that mindset. What about the person that says I'm, I'm selfless. I, I just want to put the needs of others before myself. I would, I would really, um, challenge them to think about, okay, are, if you're doing all these other things for other people, what's your motivation behind Mm. it? Are you doing it to get self gratification? Oh, look at what I've done for all these people. You know, those videos that we that we record of us giving things to the homeless. What's your motivation behind that? Um, Is it, I think you have to have a happy meet. Yeah, absolutely. Taking care of yourself and not allowing it to take over. And, And that is, I think, one thing that we are missing is, is, you know, we, we, we have to look at others. We have to look and take care of others and we have to take care of ourselves. But I think ultimately the biggest thing that those two things are going to stem off of is we have to look at our relationship with the Lord. Mm. You know, our version of self-care is going to ultimately be to take care of our relationship with us and God because then he's going to care for us. He's going to take care of us and then he's going to take care of others. And when that's our motivation, when that's our goal, when that's what we're looking towards, um, then we're going to find fulfillment. We're going to find mm. self-care. I can't tell you how many times in Psalms it talks about, uh, I will give you all you need, you know, come to me. I will fulfill you. I will yeah. give you your needs. I am your refuge your daily. and yes. your strength. Yes, yeah. exactly. Instead, we're like, oh, God, I got this. I know how to take care of myself. Mm. I'm going to go take a bubble bath. You know, oh, God, I I got this. I know how to take care of myself. I'm going to binge watch Netflix. Oh, I got this, Lord. I know how to rest. I know how to take care of myself. I'm going to go work out for three hours in the gym, you know? Mm. And we think we know what's actually going to sustain us, what's actually going to take care of us. But if we focus in on our relationship with God then I think we'll know even better what's going to fulfill us because he knows what's going to fulfill us. That's good. So what does that look like? What does that look like for the typical believer to to focus in on God, to focus in on their relationship with God, to, at, to take care of themselves by taking care of their relationship with the Lord? What does that look like practically? I think the first step that most of us need to do that we're not doing is doing the commandment of God and taking a Sabbath Mm. and actually resting. Um, And that means, you know, not constantly doing things, but taking a day to think on the Lord, to rest in the Lord, to be in the word, to be in prayer throughout the day to not overdo it like we're always constantly go, go, going instead of actually having that day to intentionally rest in the Lord. And that's going to be your first start because that's when you're going to... We God created us for rest. Of course we need to take care of ourselves. We were created for that. Um, but it doesn't always look like what we think it looks right, like. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of times we think resting is, you know taken the day off from our job. You know, Sabbath is taken the day off from our job. Um, But our day of rest, we end up running, you know, a million errands. We, you know, we wash the car, we clean the house, we do laundry, we do all those things. That's not necessarily Sabbath. Um, So, um, so yeah, so, so taking time for Sabbath, understanding this, uh, I do believe this. I, I, I believe that God set a physical standard for us um, to take some Sabbath time for rest and replenishment and refreshment. That doesn't necessarily mean um, a whole day. Um, mm-hmm. I, I do try to, Sharon and I do try to practice um, a a solid day of that. Um, and, and a lot of that's because... Um, the nature of our job, the nature of what we do is, is really a lot of giving. 
um, and so um, through relationships and things. So, um, so we try to to take a day where we just you know we just kind of chill. Um, we spend time together. We spend time um, reading or, or or doing things like that. So, um, but understanding, I, I do believe that God set a physical standard. He he created everything uh, in six days, and then he took the seventh day to rest. Not that God needs rest, you know, not that speaking the world into existence, um, you know, took a lot out of God. You know, oh, this, this almighty creature, uh, this, this supreme being had to stop and rest. I, I think he was setting a precedent for us. And that was before the, that was before the law, that was before, uh, before any of those things. So uh, Sabbath wasn't necessarily, although uh, observing Sabbath law may have gone away with Jesus, um, but the, the idea, the concept of Sabbath, yeah. uh, probably, uh, did not go away with Jesus, but it was fulfilled by Jesus and that Jesus is our rest. Yeah. He is our Sabbath. Uh, he is the fulfillment of, of, of Sabbath. Um, and so, uh, th- that's a, that's a key thing to remember. So what, what are some ways that we work on that relationship? We, we take time to rest. Um, and while we're resting, whether we're resting in the morning, we're resting in Jesus in the morning, we're resting in Jesus in the afternoon or in the evening, or we're resting in Jesus uh, one day a week, what does that look like? I think it, it does take many forms. Um, it's, of course, you know, reading the Bible and, and, and being in prayer and and really dwelling in that. I think being in community with others um, can be restful, you know, and, and, um, getting together and talking about the Lord. And Hmm. I mean, going to life group, I don't know about you, but I feel rested afterwards Hmm. because, you know, I am just so encouraged by other people around me and all of that. And, and serving, you know, can even be restful in a way and, and giving to others can really help replenish our souls a lot as well. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are all really good. Matter of fact, those things that you just mentioned are things that I outlined a couple of weeks ago, uh, when, uh, in a, in a live stream where we talked about what is essential function Mm -hmm. in life. You know, we've, we've got a lot, we're, we're spending a lot of time talking about essential employees and essential jobs or essential work. Um, and, uh, and just talking about, you know, even though the entire world shuts down, what is essential uh, to your life? What is essential uh, function in your life? And uh, I'll post these in the comments uh, of both uh, our YouTube uh, live stream and, uh, or once we post it to, to YouTube and, uh, and in the comments of, uh, of our band uh, live once it posts. Um, but, I, but I outlined them as one, you know, there's four things, read, pray, group, and serve. And I said, read is getting in the word. Uh, pray is getting on your knees. Uh, group is getting in community and serve is getting outside yourself. Yeah. Um, and those are, that's, that is self care for the believer. That is replenishing. Uh, it's funny when you said something about life group, um, life group is replenishing life group is, is, is a form of self care. It energizes you. Uh, and, and I thought of this, it can be, be. Mm -hmm. if you're in a life group that is, that is zapping you, it's, it's taking the life out of you. You're one of two things. You're either in the wrong life group Mm -hmm. or you're doing life wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, uh, if, if it wanes you now, again, that doesn't mean, you know, especially if your life group gets together and plays, you know, gaga ball, (laughs) you know, you may be tired after it. Yeah. But it better be replenishing, right? Um, or, or you're you're doing it wrong, or you're you're doing life with the wrong people. Yeah. Um, and again, it's it's a it's about that motivation. You know, are you going to life group with the thought of, oh, I have to check this off my checklist? You know, this is the Christian thing to do, or are you going it with it as, you know, I need to be with my the body, I need mm-hmm. to be with my family, I need to encourage. Um, them and they gain encouragement from them and learn what they are learning and and being able to share what God is teaching me you know if you're looking at it and it's all about that mindset mindset switch yeah that's good so getting in the word uh, just to remind you 
it, it's not, it, uh, matter of fact, Brooke is sitting here right now reading, Not God Enough. Uh, Michael quoted from Not God Enough uh, Sunday during the call to worship. Getting in the word, this is good, but that's not getting in the word. Yeah. Um, when, when we talk about um, self-care for the follower of Jesus, you can get into a book, get into a good book. I Man, I'll, I'll show you one of these days. Some of you haven't been in my office. I'll show you my books. I love books. Um, I read, I, I've got, I've got, uh, a, a Kindle library. I've got an Apple books library and I've got an office full of physical books. I love books. Yeah. Um, but that is not the replenishing self care of getting in the word. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. getting on your knees, prayer, mm -hmm. um, make sure that when you're praying that it's not you doing all the talking. Um, again, I, I cannot recommend enough Lectio 365 and Prayer Mate. Um, by the way, I, I brought it in here. I, I told you all yesterday that, that I do a Lectio 365 in the shower. I'm sure some of you are going, how do you do that? You know, how do you get your phone in the shower? I, I, two ways. Um, one, I have a Bluetooth uh, speaker. And so, uh, so I, I set that Bluetooth speaker on top of the shower. Uh, uh, and so, uh, so I'm able to hear, uh, but then I also have one of these little things. It's, uh, it's called, it's a, it's a Johto. That's the brand. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a waterproof bag and it clamps together. Um, and, uh, you open that up and you slide your phone down inside there. Uh, Sharon bought these when we, we went on a cruise and we were going to swim with the dolphins. And so it's a waterproof bag, so you can take your phone and, you know, you'd be able to still use picture, you know, take pictures with your phone. And since that's the camera most of us uh, use any uh, nowadays. Yeah. But I, I uh, it took me a while to remember that. I mean, several months had gone by after we had gone on that cruise. And I was like, I wish there was a way I could take my phone in the shower uh, to be able to listen to podcasts or whatever. And I was like, oh, duh, I've got that. I've got that waterproof bag. So uh, you can grab those on Amazon. But that's how I do uh, the Lectio 365 in the shower. I turn it on. Uh, I've got my Bluetooth speaker. Um, it's hanging right there in front of me from, you know, the shower uh, head. And uh, so I can read up along while I'm hitting the audio and the audio is playing. Um, and again, one of the things I love about that is is not only, you know, the, the prayer. And I'm beginning to incorporate some of the things from Lectio prayers. I'm beginning to incorporate some of those things in my own personal prayers. Mm. Um, and, uh, just, it, it's causing me to think about the way I say things when I talk to God and, uh, uh, group getting in community, do community. I don't care. Uh, I don't care how introverted you are. Get in community, live life with other people. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a way of self care. Um, and then, and then getting outside yourself and serving others. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we're out of time. I wish we could keep going, but I try to keep these to 30 minutes. Um, and we were five minutes late, so we actually have two more minutes, but, um, anything else you want to add? Yeah. I mean, I just want to reiterate, it's not that self care is necessarily bad. It's just that it can be a very bad cycle to get into mm -hmm. always thinking about yourself because Again, that's just not what we're called to do. You know, we just aren't. And I'm not saying that it's bad. I think therapeutically it can have um, some good results and some good progress in there are some cases. But I think that we've focused in on it too much and we need to get our focus back on what's really going to fulfill us and what's really going to give us life and help us, especially during these times that we're just we're struggling right now. All of us are, you know, it's a hard time. Yeah. I, uh, I'll close with this. Um, I, I meant to, while you were talking, I meant to look it up and I forgot to, I can probably get it fairly close. We'll post it in the comments, uh, word for word. But, um, one of the books that we use for discipleship is, is the book, true spirituality, which is a, a an in-depth verse by verse unpacking of the one chapter of Romans, Romans chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in that, um, Chip Ingram uh, quotes uh, a, a definition of humility. And, and he said, humility is not thinking too much of oneself. 
And humility is not thinking too little of oneself. Humility is not thinking of yourself at all. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, man, that was because, because a lot of us, our form of humility is thinking. Downgrading ourselves. Yeah. 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 You're a terrible person. You didn't do this right. Self-deprecation. Yeah. Yeah. We, we publicly right. and we publicly and privately speak negative things over ourselves and yeah. put ourselves down. And uh, as, as Brooke said earlier, that's just as selfish as, as pride. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's just, that be just as much arrogance as, you know, being the hero of all your own stories mm -hmm. um, because you are thinking too much of yourself still. Uh, by thinking so little of yourself. It's just not thinking about yourself at all. Mm -hmm. And so on that note, I hope that you spend the rest of today uh, glorifying God uh, by the definition we gave earlier uh, this week, uh, taking care of yourself by taking care of your relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I love you, Crossroads. Thanks for hanging out with us today. <laughs>